Hi, the Mud Broker here. A few years ago, I did a video using an 1890s Wagner Ware cast iron waffle maker to make some waffles. Today, I'm going to revisit that a little bit, but I'm going to be using two different waffle irons, very old, and I'll give a little bit of an explanation of the history and whatnot about these two. But before we get underway, I would like to thank my patrons on Patreon. Hayes Kist, Benedict Riggers, Joy Jones, Damian Bamer, Leo, Theodore Engelke, Valentin Tolman, Rudy Valvano, Kiasby, John Wheeler, CJ, Sarah, and Jim Price. Your support is greatly appreciated, and in your honor today, I'm going to have a little red bush, some nice Irish whiskey. Here's to you guys. Anyhow, first off, I'm going to be using this iron here, which is kind of warm. Where'd my hot pad go? I think it got warmer than I thought it was. I need my other hot pad so I can show you what it is. This is made by Fox Allen Jones, there you can see that a little better. Fox Allen Jones of Troy, New York. And this was made, well, it was patented, first off, on August 24th, 1869. So this thing could be as much as 152 years old. They weren't around a whole lot longer than that. There's not much information on when they went out of business, but I'm pretty sure it was about the mid 1870s. So it's pretty safe to call this a 150 year old waffle iron. You shouldn't be afraid to use old iron pretty regularly. It does it good, in fact. Let me put this on here first. Just go on there just like so. It's a good idea to use iron regularly, in fact. It keeps it in the best shape. And there's only a very few cast iron things that I wouldn't use on a regular basis. In fact, there isn't really anything I can think of. There's some that would require a bit more care to use them, and there are a couple things I would only use on a stove like this. But other than that, you shouldn't be afraid to use vintage cast iron. That's one of the coolest things about it. You can have something that's 150 years old and use it every day. So don't be afraid to use your antique cast iron. And I'm looking at you, Heather. Anyhow, this has got to warm up a bit. And I have one of these handy dandy little heat guns, which really comes in handy. It's an infrared thermometer. And I want to warm this up until it's about 350 degrees on both sides. We're only at 177 now. But I'll be back in a little bit once this warms up and we will be underway. Love the way these things flip over. We're about 375 degrees, which is right where I want to be. So we're ready to open this up and get ready to cook. These old style waffle irons didn't have didn't have handles on them like newer ones did. But once I get this going, I'll explain the handle on this to you or what should be a handle. This one doesn't have it anymore. Get in there and grease this up with melted, this is clarified butter. Either clarified butter, melted lard, melted butter, Crisco. I suppose you could use a non-stick spray if you like, but that would be heresy on ancient iron like this. Grease her up and fill with the batter. And I will close it up. And I cook it for a minute and a half at a time. A minute and a half on one side, flip it over, flip it over twice, 
and then I give it about another minute. So it's about five minutes per side. Now it can be a pain to to uh, restore an old waffle iron like this. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies that you got to try and get cleaned out, and uh, it's you know it's a hassle trying to get all stuff dug out of them. But they're really worthwhile because the waffles you get out of a waffle iron like this are just incredible. They're like nothing you've ever had before. And uh, so if you ever come across an old waffle iron that needs cleaning up, go ahead and buy it. Don't be afraid of the work involved. You'll really thank yourself for it later on. Anyway, I'm going to let this cook out and I'll be back when it's ready to go. I flipped this over for the last time and it's ready to come out. I'm going to move it off of the fire, put my cover back on. And like I said, these old waffle irons without a handle can be kind of tough to open because you don't have any real leverage on it. But if you take a knife, like so, and you get in the gap, and you pry it a little bit, and pull that up, it should, ah that ripped, damn it, should come right out, but that didn't turn out quite as nicely as I'd hoped, but it's still there. These can be a little bit tough, even if they don't stick per se, they can be a little tough to get out of the iron, so you just take a fork and kind of work around the edges, and generally it'll pop right out, even if it comes out in four pieces. Now when you restore a waffle iron, a lot of times it will, the first time you use it, this will stick like you will not believe. It doesn't matter what you do to season it, it still needs to be broke in. And that's really true of just about any cast iron. The first time you use it, if it's something that's going to stick, it will. Come on, you let go. If it can stick, it will. So, the first time you use your newly restored antique waffle iron, the first piece is going to come out in little tiny pieces. You're going to have to scrape and brush and poke and get that thing off of there. The second one will come out pretty better. Pretty better? second one will come out a lot better. The third one you'll probably burn it because you're still trying to figure out what kind of time it needs. Set that aside. But after that it'll work pretty good once it gets broken a little bit. I'm going to set this guy aside. I'm going to swear at myself a little bit for that breaking in half like that. But you can see parts that look nice look really really nice and they have a crispiness to them that you just don't get from anywhere else. I'm going to put a little more wood in my stove, get my other waffle iron and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of that thing because it's really really interesting. Okay, got my fire stoked up again and I got my next waffle iron. This is a favorite number eight Pequaware waffle iron. What makes this really unique is I am convinced that this was made before 1916. And that's kind of important because 1916 is usually considered the date that Pequaware started making, or favorite rather, the favorite stove company, started making hollowware, which is skillets and things of that nature. But I believe this was made well before that. I'm going to get her warmed up here and I'll tell you all about it this on the stove thusly. Oops, get on there you. Why are you fighting me? There. Didn't want to sit down. Anyhow, the favorite stove company was founded in 1888 by a fellow named Will William King Bull. Now Bull died in 1915 and his son Stanhope Bull took over the company as president and he started making hollowware 
in the 1916 catalog that they put out is the first year they listed it. But it always struck me as strange that a stove company wouldn't make, even if they didn't put their name on it, wouldn't make some kind of hollowware. It was a real common thing to include a set of a Dutch oven, a kettle, a skillet, and a lid that would fit all three with the purchase of a stove or use that as an incentive to buy the next higher range stove that or use it as an incentive for the next higher priced stove in their lineup. Anyway, William King Bowl worked for a company he didn't work for it, he was a part owner of a company called W.C. Davis and they were a manufacturer of cast ironware and they made waffle irons that were just about identical to this. The differences was the William, the W.C. Davis waffle irons had raised letters and on this the letters are sunken in but the iron is identical in design to the other one the base on the W.C. Davis ones had a bigger loop on the handle but again they were otherwise pretty much identical. The waffle irons that are featured in the 1916 catalog are a different design than these. They're a little bit more modern design. They're the kinds that have handles on the, on the uh, paddles of the waffle iron and they're pretty much completely different and they have a little bit different logo on them. They say favorite equals, there's an equal sign between favorite and pequel wear. So I'm convinced that William King Bowl, since he was part owner of the company when the W.C. Davis company went bankrupt in the 1880s it was reorganized as the Western Stove Company but since he was a part owner he would have been entitled to some of the assets of the company and I'm pretty sure that he took some of the tooling, patterns, and equipment with him when he started the favorite stove company. Anyhow, that's the story of this. Like I say, I'm convinced that this is in fact quite a bit older than 1916. So I'm going to get this heated up and we're going to make a waffle on this thing. Alright, my waffle iron is heated up good. A little overheating it on one side. But this has a lot better system for opening it because there's a hole in that tab and you can just hook that with a fork. Ooh, there's some piping hot in there. And you can pull it open with the fork a lot easier than you can that other one. I'm going to try and find a picture of the handle that sometimes came with those uh, with that other waffle iron. It's really kind of a cool idea. I got a little bit too much butter on there. What I'm going to do is flip it around, let it coat both sides a bit, let a little bit run out into the fire, and now I'm going to add my batter. Anyway, I'll try to find a picture of that handle and edit it into the video when I get to the editing point. This is just a Bisquick waffle batter. There's nothing special, but you can use whatever kind of batter you want. And that should be enough. Close her up. And give it a minute and a half on each side like the other one for a total of about five minutes on each side. Anyway, I'll be back when this is ready to come out and hopefully this one will turn out better than the last. Okay, this one should be done. I'll get that off of the fire, close my lid, and hopefully this one will cooperate a little better than the other one did. Let's see what we can do about getting this open. I'm going to hook her through that little hole. Move myself closer to the fire here. Hook that little hole. Stick a knife in the gap. Ooh, that one's plenty done. But it should come right off of there. At least it better. Ah, let me grab my hot pad so I can get hold of it. Usually if you go down 
to the middle, right on that seam. There she's coming loose nice. Right on that little seam, it'll pop right loose. But of course, this is going to fight me. Well, I'll just get these two off. Ah. There. That one came off perfect. Like I said, these are like dogs and kids. If you try to show them off, they'll make a fool of you. Like I said, this isn't really, except for the couple spots where it actually is stuck, this is not really stuck to the iron, it just doesn't want to let go. See that little bit there flaked right off? This one here should come right loose too if I can get it loose. If you get an edge work loose, it usually comes right out. There. But anyway. Once it cools off a little bit, take a natural bristle brush of some sort and just brush the extra crumbs off. I'm going to dump these off on here. Brush them off, oil them up again, and make your next waffle. So there you have it. Waffles on a cook stove in 100 and 150 year old waffle irons. Which of course just had to make me look bad. Anyway, don't be afraid to use your old cast iron, especially waffle irons, especially you, Heather. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, make yourself some waffles because even though that one's a little bit overdone, like I said, those are some amazing waffles. They're just unbelievably crispy and all around wonderful. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.